For the uniform distribution, the formula that we use is the minimum value plus this is the R A and D random. I will tell you what is this basically. Uh, just give me a couple of minutes times the maximum value minus minimum value. Okay. Now, whenever you want to generate a random probability number in Excel sheet, we use a command which is called as the R A N D. And if you remember from your uh, undergraduate studies, if you have used Excel, whenever you want to write down any formula in the Excel, you need to start with the equal sign. So I press the equal sign and then I write down my formula. The formula is the I want to generate the random number. Once you press the R, any kind of the formula built in into the Excel, it will appear in front of you. As you can see with the R, there are too many options it is giving you. So what we are concerned here, we are concerned with the R, A, and D. And you can see R, A, and D appears there. And you just left click with this, your mouse and it will insert the formula r n t and then you just hit enter now this will generate a random number is 0.276202 now in this uh, random number okay i, will, I can adjust it I hope it is clear now. Now, this is the random number basically. The random number is uh, generated here. And if I want to find the uniform distribution using this formula, I need to have uh, two other parameters. Now, this random number, it should uh, be greater than or equal to zero, and it should be less than or equal to one. Because this is the random probability number, probability will be lying between zero and one only. So let's uh, apply the a formula for the uniform distribution. In the uniform distribution, you know that uh, we also need two parameters, minimum value and the maximum value. So for example, I assign a minimum value column here and I assign a maximum value column here. Now you might have seen that uh, whenever I'm entering anything in the Excel cell, this random number is changing all the time. That's what the random number is about basically. It will change all the time. Another way is if you press F9 on your keyboard, you will see that uh, this number is changing. So what I'm doing on my keyboard now, I'm pressing F9. Every time I press F9 on my keyboard, this random number is changing. Now, for example, I give a minimum value for any function 2000 and the maximum value of 2400. Now, how I find the uniform distribution for this function, I, I need to apply this formula here. So I press equal sign. What is my minimum value here? Minimum value is present in my this cell. So I click this cell. And you can see that uh, it has selected this cell D5. The form in the formula, the next term is the plus. Then I need the random number R A N D. So I click this number here, which is my in B4 cell. Then I multiply it with the difference of the maximum number, which is 2400 in the cell F5, and subtract it from cell. Uh, d5 which is in the minimum number you close your parentheses and you hit the enter so in the uniform distribution value that the function gives me is 2184 again if i press uh, f9 on my keyboard this value will be changing why because we have a random number inside the formula every time i press f9 the random, random number changes 
and the value of your uniform distribution will change okay now there is another uh, distribution which is called as the normal distribution in the normal distribution the formula that we use is the norm n o r m dot i n v then you take the random number r a n d you provide the mean value and then you provide the standard deviation okay now let's apply this formula so i know that in normal distribution i need to have uh, a random number and the mean and the standard deviation so let's say i generate another random number r a n d and this one will generate me a random number so the other two parameters are mean and the standard deviation so let's uh, dedicate a cell for the mean value and one cell for the standard deviation i'm just giving some values here the mean value let's say is uh, this value and the standard deviation is the let's say 200 value now when i want to find out for the normal distribution again i need to follow this formula here so it will be norm you just press n o r m you will see that all the formula which are starting with the norm has been appeared the second one is the one you need to take on so i click on this one now once i click this formula you can see it is uh, showing me what kind of the values it needs the first value whatever the excel we need it it will highlight or bold that value so first value it is asking me the probability value now probability is my random number value so i click on random number and then you see in the formula excel is showing you that you need to press your comma here so i press my comma next and then i excel is asking me the mean value because that is bold now i select my mean value and then i press comma excel is asking me about the standard deviation value this is my standard deviation value and then we close the parenthesis and hit enter so this is your normal distribution of a function which has the mean value of this and the standard deviation value of this now again if i press f9 this value will be changing because i'm using a random number no one can predict the random number okay now let's do the couple of more uh the next one is the log normal distribution log uh, normal distribution now the formula for the log normal distribution is the long oh sorry log n o r m dot i n v we need to provide the random number then it we need to provide the mean value and then we need to provide the standard deviation value okay now let, let's uh, take another example for example i generate another random number r a n d is generate me a random number 
And now if you see in the log normal distribution properties, you need to have again the mean value and the standard deviation. So let's suppose uh, we dedicate this cell for the mean value and this cell for the standard deviation. For example, I have a value of the two as a mean and I have the one standard deviation. So how do we apply the formula? The same thing as we were doing before. You started with the equal sign and just press LOG. And you can see that all the formulas in the Excel, which are starting with this has been appeared. We are, we need to have log norm dot I and B. So I click that formula. Now the first thing highlighted is the probability value or the bold is the probability value. Probability is my random number. So I select this number. Then I press the comma and then I give it, uh, it is asking me the value of the mean. And then it is asking me the value for the standard deviation. So I provide all these values, close the parentheses and hit enter. This will give you the value for your log normal distribution of the function. Okay. Now another. Uh, is the poison distribution. Poison distribution. Now the formula for the poison distribution is the, it is the poison dot uh, DIST. random number and then we provided it a cumulative number so let's let's develop a random number for this distribution uh, for example it is the r a and d And you enter. It also need uh, a mean value. And it also need the standard deviation. Okay, for example, I give it a value of the two and standard deviation, I take it as one again. So I write down poison. This is the formula it shows me now. It is asking me the value of the X, which I need to use here. So this is your basically the random number value. And then we take the mean value. And then the last one, it is asking me the cumulative values. If you see here on the cumulative value, it is showing me either it is true or the false. So if you have the cumulative distribution function, you just choose the true values. If not, then it will be a false value. Now for the poison distribution function, this is how you calculate your values. Now, if you have any questions so far, please ask me. Folks, do you have any question for me? Please type in. Or you can use your microphone even if you have any questions. So, okay, the last one. Now in the poison distribution, basically we need to provide uh, the cumulative function. So if you look on, 
let's go back to formula here. If you look on the formula, so this is my x value, which is the random number. Then it is asking me the mean value. And then for the cumulative function, which is a CN, basically, it asks me either you have a distribution function or not. Whenever you will have uh, this kind of the functions, you will be given with the properties to use them. So this true and false come from your question statement, basically, and you choose it from your Excel formula. Is it clear now? Is there any question so far? Yes, you just choose your true or false uh, value. No, you don't need to calculate uh, the cumulative function on your own. It will be given as the properties within your question statement. Okay, any more questions so far? No? Okay. Now, let's come back to the question. I share one example with you. This was the example for Excel problem. It is saying that profit is calculating using the equation below. Profit is equal to revenue minus your variable cost plus your fixed cost. Using Microsoft Excel coding, find the expected value, mean value, minimum, and the maximum value of the profit. Also report the 95th percentile, use 10 simulation. Distribution properties are given below. Now, what are the factors here? My first factor is the revenue here okay and for the revenue it is giving me the mean value and the standard deviation now if you recall from our this exercise that we just finished if you have the mean and the standard deviation values this denotes that this is the normal distribution so basically this revenue function is following the normal distribution now in terms of the variable cost you have this mean which is uh, 200,000 and the standard deviation value again because the two properties mean and the standard deviations they are associated with the normal distribution so I will say that this variable cost is following the normal distribution okay now let's uh, see how we work them into excel sheet So let's choose the new sheet. Now the very first thing that you need to work on, you need to input your variables. What are the variables given here? So let's say I choose this as the revenue. I choose this as the variable cost. I choose the next cell to input my fixed cost value. And then I choose the profit. Okay. Now, because I know that. Uh, these variables they are associated with the normal distribution so i can write down what is their mean value i can write down what is the value of their standard deviation now look at the question which is all already in front of me so i'm just entering the values here 
so the revenue value the mean value is the 5 okay the value of your variable cost these are given in your question statement fixed value is 100000 and then you have the standard deviation of the revenue which is 50 and the variable cost standard deviation is 20000 is there any question so far how i work on this this is just everything is given to you in the question statement okay is there any question so far no okay now in the next step basically we need to develop our simulation again we will use our random value so how you do that Let's say I write down that uh, the number of simulation. Yeah, number of simulations. Now in the next uh, column, I generate my random number. Yeah, for example, we are starting with the very first simulation. So I will enter one here. This is my very first simulation. Now we need to generate the random number again. The same thing you press equal sign and R A N D and hit enter. This will generate a random number. Now here. Let's say I enter the revenue. Here I enter the variable cost. Here I enter my fixed. Okay, so we have the columns for revenue, variable cost, and the fixed cost. Now we know that uh, for the revenue, we have the mean and the standard deviation. So if you remember the formula that uh, we were using before for the normal distribution, it was the norm. Inverse. It is asking me the random number. This is a random number that I have generated. I press comma. Now you see the mean is the bold here. It is asking me the mean value because I'm concerned with the revenue variable. So this is the mean value for the revenue. And then you have, I press uh, comma again, and then you have the standard deviation. And I close the parentheses and hit enter. So it has calculated the, uh, for the revenue function, which is following the normal distribution, it has calculating me the values. Now, again, the similar procedure for the variable cost, because it is also following the same. So I go with the norm inverse. It is asking me the probability value, which is my random number here. I press comma and then I use the mean value. Then I use my standard deviation value and hit enter. Okay. Now, now one thing you need to notice here, if you are following uh, the same procedure in your computer for now, you will not get the same numbers. That's because of the different random numbers. The random number that you have will be different uh, than your friends have or I have because those are the randomly chosen numbers. So therefore, there will be different difference in your values. 
So we have done with the revenue. We have done with the variable cost. And uh, the next is the fixed cost. Now, fixed cost is uh, basically the fixed cost. It is not following any kind of the distribution. So whatever the values I have here, I just input them in the same way. Because fixed cost here is considered as the constant variable. Constant variable do not follow any kind of the distribution. Okay. Now the next I need to calculate is the profit. Now if you how we calculate the profit, if you go back to your question statement, it was saying that profit is equal to revenue minus the sum of the variable cost and the fixed cost. So I need to put the input the formula. I start with equal sign. This is the value for my revenue. Then I subtracted the sum of your variable cost and the fixed cost. And then we hit enter. So this is my value of the profit. Again, if I press F9 here, these values will be changing. But you can notice that the value of the fixed cost remain the same because it does not follow any kind of the distribution. Because it does not follow any kind of the distribution, there is no random number which can change its value. OK, I'm going to stop it here for one or two minutes and take your question if you have anything. Yes. Yes, this uh, fixed cost value is missing from the statement. I believe it is. It should be written there. Yes. The fixed cost value is missing in the question statement, so you, you can just add it there. How I know which distribution I follow? Because I know that uh, for the revenue, let's say for this variable, I have mean and the distribution values following. Usually in the question statement, you will see that uh, these are mentioned to you as well. Yes, uh, OK, so we have a question here. It has mean and the standard deviation. Can it be long norm log normal distribution? Because for the log normal, we use mean and this is standard deviation also. Now, in terms of the log normal distribution, you need to have a very small number because that's a log distribution. By small number, I mean to say it should be maybe two or five or ten. But uh, because I have uh, the higher values here, so this is uh, how I know that it is following the normal distribution. In most of the question statement, you will see that you have mentioned what kind of the distribution your variable is following. So it 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 is not you don't you don't need you don't need to worry about this. Okay. Uh, I think I answered. All. Is there any more question? Okay. Your crystal ball is not launching. We will work on that when we finish this Excel. Is there any more question so far? No? OK. Now. Whatever we have done here, this was for one simulation values. The question is uh, about performing the 10th simulation. Now what we do here, we use a drag function in the Excel. So I enter two here. I select both of them. And if you bring it to the right bottom corner, you will see that this plus sign is changing from white to the black. At that point, you need to press the left uh, keyboard and just move it down to whatever required number is. In our case, we need 10. So I drag it to the 10 value. Okay. Now the same thing with the random number. I need it for 10 distribution. I bring it to the right corner, press the left uh, key on the uh, on your mouse pad and drag it down to the 10. So this will generate me 10 random numbers. Okay. Now, 
in terms of the random uh, revenue i will do the same procedure but here is uh, some changes you need to make if i will drag this as such what will happen it will start to use the values next to these values because it correlates the cells values i will just show you okay which is wrong of course how you can fix it let's delete them first how you can fix them you click here on the revenue tab and you see this probability value we definitely need it but the value of the mean and the standard deviation for the revenue should be same for all the number of the simulations so you go go to here click here and then you enter the dollar sign that's what we called it making an absolute cell okay dollar sign here and dollar sign here now what is happening here it is freezing the value of the mean and the standard deviation when we drag the cell and then you press the enter now if we drag it it will give us the correct results okay now the same procedure for your variable cost here we want to change the random number so we will keep it uh, as such but we don't want to change the value of d3 and uh, d4 so we make it an absolute uh, cell so i put the dollar sign with both of them and just hit the enter so it will give you the variable cost here and again we can drag it to the 10 simulations now in terms of the fixed cost because it's a fixed cost it should not be changing so it should be the constant value irrespective of the number of the simulation now let's come back to the profit and same we will drag the profit value here okay and this is how you get your uh, profit uh, value for the 10 number of the simulations okay let's take some question is there any question yes we can freeze uh, we can freeze the random values but for that uh, that one i would not uh, recommend doing that because there is a reason you will see in the next analysis is everyone clear what i did here with the dollar signs why was the variable and revenue changing it was changing because once i drag this uh, from this cell in the in this cell here it will have the value from c3 and c4 but for the second simulation it was taking the value for c4 and c5 and it was just keep going that's why the values were not coming correctly is there any other way of doing this without the software what do you mean by that Is it clear to everyone what we have done for by manual calculations? The distribution, as I said, it will be given to you in your question statement. Either it is a normal distribution or exponential distribution. Is this what uh, you are asking me, Hardi? Okay. Okay, Solomon, I'm not sure what you're asking me by manual calculations. Okay. 
Now, once you have worked on this, uh, these 10 simulations, we need to perform some analysis. If you go back to your question statement, it is asking you that you need to find the expected value, which is the mean value. You need to find the median. You need to find the minimum and the maximum value of the profit. And you need to report the 95th percentile values. Okay. Okay, now before we uh, go for the analysis, we just need to clean up this mess here. I select all of them, I right click, I go to the format cells. With the format cell, uh, let's say I want to have decimal places up to two and I use my comma here because I'm dealing with the dollars unit. So I deal with the dollars here. It is already selected here and you just hit your okay. So this will basically show you the in terms of the dollar value because we are dealing with the units of dollars here. Now let's go with the very first objective. Uh, the very first objective is to find the expected value, which is the mean value. Now, what is the formula for the mean? Mean formula is the average, basically. You use the average and then you provide the range of your data. Now, in, in terms of the range, this is these are the values of the range here. This is my data range. So because I want to uh, apply the formula, let's say I press equal sign here and then I use a v average. Now it is asking me the range here. So I selected the first one and drag it to the 10 number of simulations. I close my parentheses and hit enter. So this is the value for my average or expected value. In terms of the median, the formula is the median and the range. So again, press equal and I use the median. It is asking me the range here again. I select uh, my output of the profit for 10 simulation close the parentheses hit enter this is your median value the next is uh, how do we find the minimum again for the minimum the formula is the minimum and you provide the range of your data equal sign minimum and then I provide the range of my data, which is uh, for the 10 simulation. Hit enter. Okay. The next is uh, we are interested to find the maximum value. This is the formula for the maximum value that you provide the range here. So it will be MAX. You press the MAX, it will come up and it's asking me the range now. This is my first number up to the 10 number of the simulation. I close my parentheses and hit enter. So this is my maximum value here. Now, how we analyze the results? The first thing you need to look on the values for the mean and the median values as you can see here your median is greater than 
average now you need to keep in mind if your mean value is greater than your median value then you get a positive skewness or your curve is the positive skew if your median is greater than the mean then you will have a negative skew curve okay now in our case we can see that uh, this mean value which is the average value and uh, your mean value is greater than the median value so the curve that you will get is the this one it's a positive skew skewed curve if it is a reverse case then it will be a negative uh, skewness so i can say that this is the this data with the 10 number of the simulation it is a positive skewness curve and the minimum profit uh, that you can gain is this 4654274 while the maximum profit could be 4724633 the next uh, thing you can also find is the standard deviation So in terms of standard deviation, the formula is the STDEV. So standard deviation again, we need to provide the range of our data and it provides you the standard deviation value. So I can say that there is a standard deviation of $15,121, whereas the maximum profit could be this value, the minimum profit could be of this value, considering the average or expected profit of four six seven nine three two six dollars now i'm going to stop here if you have any question please ask me these are changing because i'm using the random number we have a one question here why are the mean and the median values changing every time you press enter that's because uh, i did not fix my random number and this is why my values are changing all the time okay we have two important question here so there are multiple solutions no there will be no multiple solution but you will see the values which are very closer to each other practically when we are doing this we need to fix the random numbers and then we need to proceed so that we don't have much changes in our simulation system but i would not uh, recommend you to work on that instead uh, just leave the random numbers openly and uh, change them because uh, in the next uh, you will see that uh, we need to have the changes in the lambda numbers what is the distribution of the what is the distribution of the profit variable now the distribution of the profit variable is determined by this link actually as we said it is the positive skewness uh, let me show you uh, maybe on the internet we can go and see Now, you see here, this is the basically a normal distribution curve should be here like this. But in the negative skewness, 
it is uh, more bended towards the right hand side whereas in the positive skewness it is more bended towards the left hand side so this is how you identify the distribution if you go back to your uh, solution you say that this is the positive skewness so the curve that i will have for so the curve that i will have for the profit it should be something like this one okay and you have find out the mean value already which is uh, this one this is your mean value for this okay and the minimum value is starting from here the minimum value starting from here this is your maximum value is there any question so far Is there any question so far, or we can move next? Now, in your question, it was asking you to find out uh, the values at uh, ninety-five uh, percentile. Okay. If you want to find out the percentile, the formula that we use is percentile and then you provide the range and then you provide the value at which you want to find out your percentile value so this is the percentile so it is asking me the value of my array which is the this profit values for the 10 simulations okay i press comma now it is asking me the value for my k and we are interested to find out uh, for 95 percentile so i use the 95 here it should be 0 0.5 yes so this is my value 0.495 value so this is my 95th percentile value okay now how do you interpret this result basically this is showing that there are 90 we are 95 percent sure that your profit will be this value which is four seven four one five three eight or below and there are five percent chances that our profit will be higher than this value similarly you can find out for fifth percentile you can find out for 75th percentile um, you can find out for 25th percentile or whatever okay the only thing you need to change is in the formula instead of 0.95 if i want to find out for fifth percentile i will use 0 0.05 for 75th percentile i will use uh, 0 0.75 for 25th percentile i will use 0.25 is there any question so far okay now we have a question here 
can you show the 95th percentile in the curve now if you have uh, this is in your lecture uh, okay let me draw this here now. now one when we you draw the cumulative distribution function it will look you something like this so this is your one here probability values from 0 to 1 and these are your dollar values here by 95 percentile means i go 0.95 here and see what is the value of my dollars so this is the area basically that we are discussing here this is called as the cumulative distributive function Now we have a question here how different is uh, percentile from probability now percentile basically shows you how much uh, percentage of the data lies within that given value for example if i'm considering with the 95 percentile so i will say that how much data is lying within that limit whereas probability is just a number between zero and one Books, is there any more question? Okay. Now, this simulation that you just learned, this is what we call as. Monte Carlo simulation. Folks, this is one of the very useful technique uh, in uncertainty analysis and safety and risk engineering problems. Monte Carlo simulation, you will see too many literature over this one even okay is there any question so far no right now if i now you have seen that this is a very tedious kind of job actually we need to set up our formula we need to drag them down it is okay if you're doing 10 or even 100 simulations but if i ask you that uh, we need to have at least 1000 simulation so what you will do you will uh, drag this number up to 1000 drag the random number up to 1000 the revenue variable fixed cost and the profit you need to drag them up to 1000 but it is a very tedious uh, thing to do. An alternate way is that we use a crystal ball software to perform these calculations. Now, for that one, I gave you one example here. It is a similar example, but I made some changes uh, in the distribution system. So it is saying that profit is calculated using the equation below. Profit is equal to revenue minus cost. Using the distribution properties below, find the expected value, mean, median, standard deviation, minimum, and the maximum values of profit. Also report the 95th percentile. Use 10,000 simulations. So if you are going to do this in Excel, it is a very tedious job, of course. Revenue follows the normal distribution curve, having the mean of 500 and standard deviation of 50. Cost follows a triangle distribution having a minimum value of 200, most likely value of 300, and maximum value of 400. Also perform the following analysis. What is the likelihood of achieving a profit of 200? 
what is the likelihood of achieving no profit what profit range is obtained with certainty of 80 percent perform sensitive analysis and report the most influencing risk factor now how many of you have the problems installing uh, crystal ball and what was the issue you are facing you need to specify me what was the issue you are facing there Okay, Sunday. What was your issue, Hadish? What was uh, your problem when you were trying to install the crystal ball? Okay, tr uh, he's saying that your access to the Oracle software cloud has been temporarily delayed now sometimes they need to review your requests to provide you access for the trial version so maybe you can get it within next 24 hours is it's not a big problem after installing it i try to launch it but it says cannot launch cannot find the excel so what you need to do you need to open your excel first and then open your uh, software it should work then sunday Is there anyone here who who has issue with the installing the crystal ball? Okay, it's saying that I have completed a download, but I cannot open it. You need to have. Uh, are you using the macbook uh, if it is a macbook it does not uh, support the ios system he's saying gumming is asking only 15 days free trial how can we use it in the final uh, you can uh, give them a new email address and get a new trial key it's uh, now you need to make sure you have the excel installed in your uh, computer Yes, you can use another email to register again. Yeah. Okay. Now let's see how we work uh, in the crystal ball. If you have any problems uh, with installations, we can deal that later for sure. Now. In your question statement, if you see here, I have uh, two variables given. One is the revenue, uh, revenue, and the other variable is the cost. Now, for the revenue, uh, it is giving you a mean value and a standard deviation value for the cost you have three values minimum value the most likely value and the maximum value Now the mean value for the revenue is 500 in the question statement. The standard deviation value is 50. For the cost, uh, the minimum value is uh, 200. The most likely value is the 300. And the maximum value is 400. Okay. Now I'm going to show you how do you assign the distribution using the crystal ball. So once you have installed uh, the crystal ball, it will come up as a adds in into your Excel sheet here. So this is at the very end. Now first understand what are all these uh, buttons here. This is the area where you assign the distribution uh, or assumptions. We called it technically. 
this is the forecast value for example we want to find out the profit which is the outcome value that's what uh, is for you can define the correlation you can clear any kind of uh, the distribution now this is the area where you decide how many number of the simulation you want to run these are the for the analysis these are some of the tool for the optimization and if you have need any help you can go to these resources now my revenue uh, is the following the uh, normal distribution so what you do you click here and then you go to the define assumption once you right click here click the distribution gallery now it will show you this distribution list as you can see here these are all the distributions which are in the crystal ball we have normal distribution triangle distribution uniform distribution log normal gamma webull if you click on any of them you can see the properties and details here at the bottom now for now we know that for our revenue we have the normal distribution i click the normal here and you press ok it will show you a normal distribution curve where it is asking you two value the first is the mean value the second one is the standard deviation value now because i selected mean value before i started so it has uh, given it a mean value of 500 and the standard deviation of 50 which is which i really wanted if not what you can do you can click on this small icon and it will ask you the address of that cell where you have the mean values you click that and press okay and then you press enter here once you have uh, done this by pressing ok it will assign a normal distribution to your revenue data and the color of your cell will always change to the green one by green it means to say that the distribution has been assigned to this okay now this is my one variable the second variable is the cost here again i go to the distribution gallery i know that uh, this is following the triangle distribution i click on the triangle and press ok and it will showing me this triangle distribution now in the triangle distribution it has a minimum value it has the likeliest value or the most likely value and the maximum value as you can see here computer choose its minimum value on its own but we don't want it how you can change it you just click here and click on the minimum press ok and press enter so it will adjust the shape of your curve depending upon your values likely value is okay which is 300 but the maximum value i want to have it 400 so you click here and click your maximum values and again press enter it will adjust your curve based on your input data there's another way that you can enter these value manu manually but if you link the cell and every time you change the cell value it will automatically change the distribution so i would highly recommend if you use this linking function so then you press ok as you can see that most likely value cell has been turned into the green so this means we have defined the distribution for this Okay, is there any question so far? No? Can you please uh, do the cost part again? Okay, sure. Now, uh, because I'm going to do it again, what I need to do first, I need to clear this uh, distribution assigned assumption. So, what I do, I cl click on this cell and press clear. It will ask you clear the selected crystal ball data. I say yes. So it will be gone now. Let's start with the new things. So I click on my most likely value. I go to my assumptions distribution gallery. I know that this following the triangle distribution. I click on the triangle distribution and hit OK. 
I know that my minimum value is uh, 200, but the computer itself selected the value of the 270. So I want to change it. How I do that? I click on this small icon and select the minimum cell value. Press OK and press Enter. You see that 200 is here. Likely value is 300, which is OK. Maximum value, again, I need 400. So I choose this 400. Press OK, hit Enter. And then you, when you, when you see that uh, you have correctly entered your data, you press your OK here. It will turn into the green. That means a distribution has been assigned to the cost value. Can I click on the minimum or the maximum cell to do the same thing instead of? Yes, sure, you can do it, but just make sure before you press OK, you have given the correct data. Okay. Now simulation tools or any kind of the software it is good for the simulation but computer does not know either the input data is right or wrong this is you who should know that your input data is right even if you will provide the wrong input data to a computer to the simulation software it will give you some results and of course because your input data is wrong your output will be wrong as well okay is there any more questions so far Is a question here how does the options change to mean and deviation to minimum and maximum because i choose a different uh, distribution for the revenue i was i choose uh, the normal distribution in which i was supposed to have the mean and the standard deviation whereas in the cost one in the given statement of the question it is asking me to use the triangle distribution how can we understand that it is triangle it is in the given statement uh, you see here this is a question statement it says that it is a triangle distribution the cost is following a triangle distribution this is the minimum value this is the most likely value and this is the maximum value okay is there any more question Yes. Okay. What is the question, Bernard? Okay. Now we have done with the assigning the probability distribution. What we need to do the next step, we need to set up our model. If you go back to your question statement again, now the model and equation is the same thing. The equation is that profit is equal to the revenue minus your cost value. Okay. Okay. We have the question. Does this uh, does okay? Now what is the question? Does this mean that this kind of the distribution cannot be done in Excel? No, we can definitely do this. We but we have to use the formulas. Now, we know that uh, we need to find out our profit here. For the profit, uh, we know that this is the revenue minus your cost value. And I press enter here. Now, this is my profit value. Now, I need to tell my crystal ball that this is the output that I needed. For that, we would, you make it as a four cost cell. So you go on the top. You press on the this define forecast, and it is asking you what is the name of your output variable, which is a profit, of course, and what are the units. I give it a value of the dollars here, and then you press OK. Once we press OK, you will see that there is a change in the color of the cell. This has been changed uh, from white to the sky blue because now the computer knows that this is the variable on which it needs to perform the simulation now we are done with the setting up our model now we need to run our simulations 
over the top of this one step this is if i go there it shows that this is a single step if i click this once you will see that uh, the values are changing this is the same process as we were pressing f9 when we were using the excel so we are giving it a step change now if you come back to your question he says that you need to work on 10000 simulations right so this is the number that you are going to add up here. Okay. And how do you run this simulation? You just press the start button here. So the computer is performing the 10,000 uh, simulations. Computer is performing the 10,000 simulation and it is displaying you the results. Now, what is happening uh, here basically when computer is running the simulation? You just need to understand what is happening here and how we are getting our results. So, for example, uh, this is my revenue. This is my cost. I know that uh, the revenue is uh, following the normal distribution, so it should be something like this. I know that uh, the cost is following the triangle distribution, so it should be something like this. Now, by distribution, it means to say it has more than one value. So what the computer will do in first simulation, it will take uh, one value from here and one value from your cost variable and it will send them to the model which is which is calculating the profit as the output and the computer will store store that one value now again it will go back and do the same process with the second value of the revenue second random value of the revenue and the random value of the cost so this process is basically computer is repeating 10000 times Once it has repeated this uh, 10,000 times, simulation will stop and for the profit, it will generate a normal distribution curve. Okay, so that's, that's what basically is happening here. So this is my profit curve. Is there any question so far? Alauddin, can you hear me now? Okay. Okay. Now on this uh, curve, we can perform some analysis basically. The first thing is you need to find the expected value, median, standard deviation, minimum, maximum, as we were discussing before. So what you do here, you go to your view, you go to your statistics, and these are the values here. So as you can see, this is my mean value, this is my median value, this is my standard deviation value, this is my variance, it is negatively skewed, and the minimum is this value profit, and the maximum profit is this one. So with this, I can say that uh, 
my expected or the mean value is uh, two hundred two dollars seventy seven cents, whereas my median is two zero three dollars fourteen cents, with the standard deviation value of sixty three point six one. The minimum profit I can get is the twenty two point four eight, and the maximum profit I can get is four hundred ten and five cents. Now, if I want to find out the percentile values, you go back to the view, and these are all the percentile values. If I, I want to find out for ninety-five percent, what I need to do, I need to do the data interpretation. We have some question. Can you repeat the forecast profit? Okay, for the forecast profit. You just uh, let's re restart it. We need to clear the simulation again, okay? And once you input your formula, you just go to the forecast. It is asking me the name and the units. Units I want it in terms of the dollars, and press OK. I know that I want to have ten thousand simulations, and then you just run your simulation. Okay, Huda is asking where is the percentile. Okay, I will show you. Let's uh, finish this simulation. Okay. Now, how do you find the percentile column? You go to the view. In the view, you can see that. Uh, there is a cumulative chart there is a statistics here and the percentile you click here it will show you all the percentile values so for 30 percentile values you have 166.43 if you want to find in between 30 and 40 you use the interpolation now i was discussing you about the cumulative curve this is the cumulative curve that is generated between 0 and the 1 which i just draw on the paint so for 95 percent values you can come here and see what will be your values here but we need to what we can calculate it in the uh, crystal ball is the interpolation uh, linear no it will not be linear because your curve is changing all the time here Okay, that's a very good question. Did you know that the profit distribution will be normal before running the simulation? No. By default, uh, your crystal ball software develop all kind of the curves as the normal distribution curve by default. And uh, if you want to see either there are positive skews or negative skews, you need to go and look at the values uh, of your uh, statistics here. So it is showing me that it's a negatively skewed curve basically. Is there any more question? Okay. Uh, no. Uh, if I go back to view here, this is my frequency chart. So these are values as I show you in previously. So what was happening it was taking one value of the revenue one value of the cost and once it's calculate the one value of the profit it will put here so this is how this simulation was happening so this value 200 is the mostly highest value that uh, that was happening in the simulation now we can answer some question here if you go back to your uh, now it is asking what is the likelihood of achieving a profit of 200 okay what is the likelihood of achieving a profit of 200 because we want to find out the profit of 200 now the, see the range here for this range. it is starting from minus infinity to plus infinity so what i do i put uh, a 200 value on the left and press enter 
as you can see here there are 50.68 percent certainty that you can get a profit of 200 once i subtract this value 50.68 from 100 that will be the percentage that you will not get the profit of 200 the second question was what is the likelihood of achieving no profit now in that case you need to drag this back to the infinity because we are talking about uh, having uh, no profit so i enter zero on this side so there is 0 0.09 percent certainty that we will get uh, a loss so i can say that there is a uh, 99.91% surety that we will not get the loss the third is the what profit range is obtained with the certainty of 80% now for that one you just need to drag this uh, back to its minus infinity and it is asking me for 80% of the certainty. I, I input uh, a click on the certainty, and from the keyboard, you just enter your 80%. So it will uh, show you the value. So I can say that uh, with the 80% certainty, our profit can lie between $117. To $283. The next step, uh, the fourth question, it is asking perform the sensitive analysis and report the most influencing risk factor. For that one, you go back here and you open the sensitivity chart here. Now, this chart is uh, showing you the correlation or the impact of the revenue on your output and the cost as you can see that the revenue has the highest impact on your output value as opposed to the cost value and because uh, the cost is the negative here so this means to say if we want to increase our profit we need to reduce our cost and because the revenue is the positive here so we in order to increase our profit we need to increase our revenue value okay. is there any question now why does it matter which side of the input profit if it does now, because uh, you see here, this profit is starting from the zero values here. And it is keep increasing here. So when I want to see that what will be my zero profit, I have to input my zero on the right hand side. So that it can squeeze back to the minus infinity and tell me how much are the chances there. But if I want to find out any given profit, let's say I want to see how much are the chances for a profit of 120. So there are 89.3% chances that I will get a profit of 120. Uh, if I subtract it from 100, I can see that there are 11% chances that I will not get it. Now, this profile is the same if you use your cumulative frequency profile you see here. Is the same profile as you were doing before so if you remember we want to see for let's say this one so there are five percent certainty that the profit could be 303 okay i did not get the last part would you please explain it again which last part how I perform the analysis or how I convert into the cumulative function.
last part of the question okay uh, let's see it was asking perform the sensory analysis and reports the most influencing risk factor so what i said once you have done with the analysis you go to the view fact uh, you go to the forecast here and you just open your sensitivity chart so sens sensory analysis basically show you which uh, input variable in our case there are two variables revenue and the cost has the most influence on our output value which is the profit now as you can see in our case the revenue has a 58.4% impact on your profit whereas the cost has negative 41.6% impact on our profit because the revenue has a positive impact so this means to say increasing the revenue can increase our profit whereas the cost has a negative impact this means to say if we want if we want to increase our profit we need to reduce the value of our cost Is there any more question? Okay, last part of the question. Yes, of course, because your revenue is fifty-eight point four percent, which is in terms of positive, whereas your cost is forty-one point six percent in terms of the negative. So revenue has a more impact. Yes, folks. Is there any more question? If you don't have any more questions, so we will end this lecture here. I will. Uh, if you have any question, you can just email me about this. Does the crystal ball work with the Excel? Yes, it it works with the all versions of Excel. What kind of the question will we have in the final exam? Now, in the final exam, what I will do. Just like uh, this is the model here, right? So I can change this model to something else. I can give you any other equations. I can tell you that input values will be following normal distribution with the mean of this, standard deviation of this, and find out uh, the output value. So you you need to set up your model in the Excel and uh, Crystal Ball, depending upon the type of the question. so the only thing you need to know how you do you do coding in the microsoft excel for uncertain analysis and uh, how you work in the crystal ball software there are lots of uh, online examples that you can find and work on that i will also try to share some example with you on d2l as well so that you can practice uh, on your own is there any more question please I have Excel 2010 installed, but uh, App says cannot find the Excel installation. What I would recommend you, you need to reinstall your office and then try to install the Crystal Ball. We don't need Excel if we have the Crystal Ball. What do you mean by that? Yes, I will upload this uh, slides uh, and share a link with you for sure. Yeah. Is the final grading the same? What do you mean by that? Yes, crystal ball can do the same job as the Excel. But as I said, if I ask you to do thousand simulation in the Excel, it is quite difficult job to work on that, or maybe ten thousand simulations. But X crystal ball can do it uh, without any problem. Yes, you need to have the Excel before you want to use the crystal ball because as i said in the start the crystal ball is uh, uh, adds in so it needs to have the excel already installed
folks, any more question? Okay. So if you don't have any more question, we will end this session here. I will uh, also share the link of uh, this uh, lecture with you so that you can work on the example on your own. And uh, do, do take care of yourself and see you soon. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, everyone. OK, thank you and bye for now.